Do you have absolute certainty on how you go from hello to yes on what you're looking for? I watch people get stuck and frozen, and that breaks my heart. I was once stuck and frozen too. Greatest superpower in the world that is attainable for you is the ability to influence people. Authenticity, uh, you are one of the first human beings in the world that pops up for me, as well Thank as you, Sean. Creating your beautiful skill set. So thanks so much for doing this and being here today, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, like, what is this to you, and why are you gathering these fine folks today? And how about a fun fact? Yeah. So, I mean, what this is, what this is to me really is something new. It's new for me as, as it is for my friends and my colleagues. And I thought it was a great opportunity for us to sort of get together and talk, sort of like a gathering that we would have if we were meeting in person, but where, of course, we can't meet in person these days. But at the same time, we can learn and we can accelerate through, um, through the formula, learning how to better communicate and better reach our goals, whatever those goals might be. And I, I want my friends and colleagues to sort of learn some of the things I've learned. So that's why they're here. Wow. And thank you for your courage, um, your acceleration. It's been an honor and I've learned a ton from you um, as well, my friend. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. So yeah, you want to, sorry, I hear a little bit of feedback on Blinded Team. Not sure where that's coming from. Um, if everyone else could mute when you're not talking, that might help. If you don't mind, that would. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so should we get to introductions and we'll explain a little bit uh, more about what this is shortly, other than the fact that we're unlocking influence as a superpower. Um, and that may sound hyperbolic, but we'll drop in a little bit uh, and put some math behind the seeming hyperbole. So yeah, uh, Gina, Dr. Sean, how are we handling intros? Yeah. Why don't so we start with the judges first? Yeah, great. Okay, uh, so let's go. You want to yeah. go for it, Sean? I'll just sit by and hang out. Why don't we start with uh, the shirtless chef? My favorite shirtless <laughs> chef, Nick Knudsen. Thank you, Sean. And uh, I'm really grateful to uh, be on this call with all of you wonderful people. So if you uh, take 150 pounds of Spartan physical strength and mental fortitude, toss in nine and a half years of sobriety, 10 ounces of an iron-willed heart, and just a dash of vulnerability, and courage, all of that into a magic pot, you come up with a magic uh, or a methodical shirtless chef, because I really like to be close to the fire. And what I'm here to do is to help people cook better and love deeper. So thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nick. Nick, how about a fun fact? Fun fact, I kind of shared it. Well, uh, you know, it, it's uh, about 32 degrees and it's just perfect weather to go for a swim in the nearby lake. So I did that just the other day. <laughs> a cold plunge. That's fantastic. That'll wake you up. Awesome. Great job, Nick. Uh, we have uh, we have Orange Crushing and Frank here as one of our, our second judge. Well, Sean, thanks for today. And hey, Sean, for some reason, you're looking smarter. I don't know. There's something about you that's just wicked smart right now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm the CEO of Lewis & Clark, which is a company that trades and buys and sells electronic factory equipment. We do auctions and buy the entire company. I'm also the CEO of Orange, which is a uh, orange movement which is about uh, helping people, especially in the next chapter of their life, people that are stuck or reach the plateau. I help them get unstuck, creative. I help them get, you know, incentivized and get their businesses off the ground, get their lives re reconstructed and, and moving in a really fast and driven and passionate way. I live here in Tampa, Florida, originally from Boston. That's why I said Wick, uh, Sean looks wicked smart with those glasses on. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> a fun fact about me is I was born in August and I always resonated with a lion, but I did not know because there was some lion facts that you shared with last night. But I did not know that August tattoo to be my birthday is the actual International Day of the Lion. And I have a lion tattoo on my left shoulder to represent that when I turn 60. Yeah. Fantastic. So that is me. That's fantastic. <laughs> 
You know, our third judge is um, is Adam uh, Gugino. Gugino, he's not here yet, I guess. I think he said he's going to join us a few minutes late. He's finishing up a call, so he'll be here in a few minutes. He'll be here in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, Sean. Okay, great. Shall we do some introductions of our um, our illustrious guests? Yes, please. Absolutely. Keith Pitchford, he's in the upper left of my screen. Why don't we have Keith go ahead? Keith, Keith and I are Cupola brothers. <laughs> That's our fun fact, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we... Um, we live in the same neighborhood and uh, our two houses uh, possess cupolas. Um, so uh, mine's an Italianate uh, design, uh, designed by my lovely bride, actually. And uh, we subcontracted it and built it uh, about 15 years ago. Um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, though, by trade. I used to be a uh, carpenter contractor back in my first life uh, about 35 years ago. And uh, thanks to Jimmy Carter and the... Uh, downturn in the economy, I went to school and became an orthopedic surgeon. So I still work with uh, hammers and saws and chisels, uh, just uh, in, a, in a more forgiving form than uh, wood. Um, you know, human bones actually heal themselves, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and uh, president and CEO of Great Lakes Orthopedics started that 22 years ago, and uh, just uh, looking forward to uh, trying to open the next chapter. Keith is very humble. He's an exceptional orthopedic surgeon, does amazing work on hips, knees, and shoulders. And Keith gave a lecture once that I attended. And if you ever saw the movie Fantastic Voyage, I'm not sure if you saw that, where a tiny little spaceship goes into the circulation of your body and goes and solves some problem. Keith drew a picture in our minds of a shoulder. I remember this vividly. I felt like I was inside that shoulder on, on the Fantastic Voyage because of the way he explained it so beautifully. It was very cool. Thank very. you. You're very kind. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Uh, next, how about Katie? Katie Sarkeesian, would you give us a little intro on yourself and tell us a fun fact? Hi, good afternoon, doctor. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Uh, Katie Sarkeesian. I am a personal injury attorney at Sarkeesian, Sarkeesian and Associates. I have the privilege of working with my father, my brother, my cousin, and one non-blood related attorney. So, uh, Part of my fun fact is, is we work together and we also get along on the weekends. So I thought that would be something fun to share with everyone. Okay. We practice uh, different areas of law. I myself do civil litigation. We help injured victims from work-related injuries, uh, car accidents, trucking accidents, uh, that sort of thing. I've been practicing for eight years now. I attended undergraduate at Loyola University of Chicago and law school in Western Michigan. Uh, fun fact, I suppose, would be the most adventurous thing I've done was sleep in the Sahara Desert when I had the uh, adventure of going to West Tunisia, Africa. And thanks for having me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, Katie. Katie is indeed a caring advocate for her clients who are suffering from sometimes pretty severe pain from injuries, and she's just an incredible person. Awesome, Sean. Next, George. George George Patrick is uh, another illustrious attorney in our group here, and I'd like, love to hear what you have to say, George. My name's George Patrick. Uh, I practice workers' compensation law here in Indiana, and I represent uh, injured employees before the workers' compensation board. Many people don't realize in the state of Indiana, we only have six workers' compensation judges for the entire state. Wow. I focus on the three north of Indianapolis. Um, and I've been doing that now for 29 years. Uh, it's what I do about six days a week. Uh, I'm fortunate that I have three wonderful boys who uh, are used to telephone calls in the car when we're going to baseball games or something. And um, uh, I'm surrounded by great staff uh, at the office. The fun fact is probably the newest person into the office is been there nine years now. Uh, and so uh, my office manager was at my wedding um, 26 years ago. So uh, I'm fortunate to be surrounded with great people um, and a fantastic law partner. Amazing. George, can I ask this and jump in, Sean, for a sec? Go ahead, Sean. Um, where are you in the continuum of your uh, baseball games with your uh, son or daughter? Where's that, where, where's that process at this point? Uh, I have a son who's a senior um, in college, 
And uh, he's very proud to already have his letter for his junior year saying they'll give him another year of eligibility. Awesome. He's very frustrated to hear that currently the NCAA is only discussing playing conference games only for baseball with no postseason tournament play to the point where he's trying to talk me into the fact that he should take a gap year yeah. um, so that um, he can have a uh, full season, uh, in theory, his senior year. Um, but baseball's looking uh, at the college level um, somewhat like the uh, football programs are where they play a very limited schedule. And where does he play? Uh, he's playing in uh, DePaul University, Greencastle, Indiana now. Oh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on uh, that. I hope it all goes well. Thank you. Yeah. Sean. Sean knows a good amount about uh, about about uh, college baseball, George. I'm not sure if you know about that. Oh. A former D1 player, would have been in the major leagues, had circumstances changed a little bit. Maybe could you share a little bit about that with about that with us, Sean? Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, my name is Sean Callagy. Um, I'll just drop in quickly that um, I am the, you know, co-founder of Unblinded, the creator of this. I own a 125-person law firm um, with offices in five states. And uh, yeah, I was, I went to Columbia University. It was a four-year Division I starter, and I was captain my senior year, and I am currently blind. Um, so my fun fact for today is that I'm a blind guy that in the last five weeks taught a blind guy to surf. Um, and so that ended my baseball career uh, in hopes of going further, but it was in many ways an incredible blessing. But I love athletics. I have three children. I had the privilege of uh, coaching uh, baseball at the high club level, soccer at a high club level, um, even though footnote, I didn't even play soccer. That's its own interesting story um, for my daughters and my son. So yeah, but uh, thanks for, for doing this again, Sean. And, and Sean's son, for those that don't know, is um, an incredible uh, tennis player, rocking things out, um, you know, in, in Indiana. So yeah, thank you. I think that um, some of our, since most of our friends on this call are, are who live around here, probably know because he's been in the papers quite a bit in the last couple of weeks for his tennis, uh, his tennis, you know, successes on the, on the court. But uh, he had a bittersweet ending to his season last weekend. They got in the quarterfinals on Friday. They won the quarterfinals on Friday, made it to the semifinals in the state tournament. And unfortunately they lost in that semifinal mm -hmm. match. This close, so close to getting to the finals. I, I mean, couldn't have been closer. They would have been in the finals. Uh, incredible so, punishment, though, sir. Yeah, it was crazy. So let's uh, move on to our, our next contestant, Keith Ellis, Dr. Dr. Ellis. Hello, I'm uh, Keith Ellis. I am a physical therapist, owner of Innovative Physical Therapy. We have uh, three clinics now in uh, Northwest Indiana. Our third one, we opened Crown Point. February, right before everything hit. So it's been a little crazy whirlwind, but we're getting through it pretty well. A um, little bit, uh, we are the, one of the only clinics in the area that do one-on-one -on -one physical therapy. We're one of the last ones around, um, trying to be the best physical therapy company that we can. A um, little bit of my background is I graduated from Andrews University. I actually moved away for a year to St. Thomas, and I did in-home physical therapy for a spinal cord injury patient. So Right around this time of the year, I really miss that weather down in St. Thomas, but uh, it kind of kicks in right around November, December when that snow starts to hit. Um, I then came back, worked at one of the big companies and did that for three years and kind of decided I need to go on my own. So I've been on my own for about six years now and it's been going pretty well. Awesome. One awesome. fact about me is uh, I have two pet goats. So we have little- Oh my little God. Little yeah. <laughs> and Keith, real quick, what was your relationship like with the ocean in St. Thomas? Uh, what'd you, what did you do? I loved it. I would snorkel. I had some friends that had um, some boats. My boss technically had a lot of money. So he had a big mansion on the water with an infinity pool that he said he could use anytime. So it was pretty nice, pretty nice right after PT school to get down there for a year. An incredible experience. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, and Keith also came. If I if I if I understand correctly, Keith actually started his practice right in his hometown where he grew up. Right, you're in Ch in Chesterton, right? So he's a, a you know a hometown success. Came back home and started his business there, which is great. 
That's awesome. After a little bit showing up some fun time in St. Thomas. Yes, exactly. He saw the world. <laughs> Next, Dr. Cordova, Jose Cordova, a good friend of mine, chiropractor in our community and has magical hands. Love to hear what he has to say to, 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 for us all today. Jose, I think you're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Sean. I really appreciate that. And once again, congratulations to your son. I think that's a huge achievement. I've seen him play, and he's awesome. And Sean well, plays pretty well tennis, too, by the way. Well, and Jose is a fellow tennis aficionado. His son is like, from the age of three, is still playing now. What is he, seven or eight now? He's 10. He's 10. He can outplay 15-year-olds. I mean, he's got an amazing player. I mean, we're going to hear good things about your son, Jose. Wow. Well, uh, maybe, maybe he can look after Nikki. He can follow Nikki's <laughs> footsteps. But, for sure. But thank you for having me. And, and listen, I also have to apologize because I do have to step out at 4.30. I'm still I'm still practicing right now. But uh, we'll my have name you is go Jose first, Cordova. Jose. Okay. My name is Jose Cordova, first of all. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done anything like this before. And so I'm kind of learning the process. But uh, I'm a chiropractor here in Munster, Indiana, just down the street from Sean's office. Uh, I've been practicing now, I think, for uh, 24 years. Uh, and uh, I was basically doing biomechanics and uh, a few years back, and I know, Sean, you're aware of this, my wife came down with an autoimmune condition, yeah. and it, it kind of changed my focus and practice because she was having so many side effects from the way we were treating medically uh, her condition that I ended up researching and getting into uh, functional medicine. And so yeah. now I'm, I'm practicing, I still do biomechanics, but I'm doing a lot of functional medicine in my office, uh, and I know you, you are aware that I'm, I'm of Hispanic heritage, and so uh, I, I, I first think in Spanish. My first language is Spanish. And so a big part of my, my office is a community of Spanish speaking patients. And I find that I basically become a gatekeeper for a lot of my patients because mm -hmm. they come in to see me from everything from a cold to a broken bone to back pain. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I have to have a wide network to be able to send these patients where they need to go. So fun fact for me, you know, as I was in college, I, I decided that I was going to take harmonica lesson uh, for one credit hour. I needed one credit hour. And I said, I'm going to take a harmonica class. Well, I showed up to the class. The, the instructor really didn't know how to play the harmonica. Uh, and so uh, and uh, so in any case, uh, the whole the, after that, I always walked around with a harmonica in my pocket. All my friends thought I was uh, an expert with a harmonica, but I only knew how to play one song and I still can play that one today. <laughs> and what is that song? Uh, 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 when the Saints Go Marching In. From oh, uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, these I, are I, I, awesome people. Thank you again so much for, you know, meeting these incredible people, Sean. I was going to say, Jose, I wonder if your old girlfriend used to say, uh, Jose, is that is that a harmonic in your pocket or are you happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just happy to see her, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we have taken the P, uh, we had a PG 13 comment on an earlier railroad today. Sean has like dipped it right at the edge of PG 13 until I go R. But thank you. We'll, we'll keep it below NC 17 for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We have um, next is Tom Sedaris. He's um, an accountant in our area, a wizard with numbers. And, you know, he can dig into the nuances of a PL and a balance sheet better than anybody I know. Tom, tell us a little about yourself. Hello, everyone. So my name is Hans Sedaris. I'm an accountant. Um, I actually started in finance. I started as a derivatives trader in Chicago. I CDOE for about 10 years. Um, after 2008, 2009, our hedge fund um, took some time off and I decided kind of like Katie um, to go into the family business. So I work with my brother, my father, and my cousin as well um, at our accounting firm. And we handle small to medium sized businesses, everything from payroll, tax returns, finance, financial statements. And uh, we also do some consulting. Um, Dr. Kondamari's business, we've been helping for a few years now. Um, basically, help consult him and answer any questions and go over financials and 
basically help them figure out the best way not to pay taxes. <laughs> Um, fun fact about me, um, I noticed when Chef Nick said something about Spartan, I ran the Spartan race three times, which was uh, an interesting race, uh, along with the Tough Mudder race, so, you know, those are fun things that you do while you're young, because I don't know if I could do them anymore. That's amazing, Tom. Thank you so much. Tom, I was going to just say, I'm not sure if your Wi-Fi can be adjusted. I, it, at least what I was hearing was sort of not exactly clear. Yeah, there was some drag there. Maybe the camera can go off and on or reset. Yeah. Great. Um, I know we have one more um, contestant who's joining us. He texted me a few minutes ago saying he's late um, and he'll be joining us. But we could probably get started, Sean. What do you suggest? Yeah, absolutely. Could I just share for one sec, like what we're doing and the, the genesis of this, Sean? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So again, hey, my name is Sean Callagy. Um, I gave you a brief background or Sean introduced that before. And yeah, I think that influence is in fact a superpower. Um, and if you think about it, um, there's an amazing um, diversity of dynamics that people enjoy around many areas of their life. And I'll drop in with two quick moments. First, um, I hired four people to schedule meetings for me 15 years ago after I built and sold my first law firm, which I started $100,000 in debt on my credit card and built it to a 40 person law firm in two years out of law school. Um, and I, then I created a training and development company to teach people how to do things like that. So um, yeah, and, and when I did, the first three people booked zero meetings, number two booked zero meetings, number three booked zero meetings. And Sean, um, what do you think they said those three people who were told what to call about, what it was they were offering, generally who to call. What do you think those three people said, Sean, about what was happening? I'll bet they made, made excuses for why it wasn't happening. Yes, it was the, the leads, the people, the stuff, the opportunity. But there was a fourth person. And this fourth person booked 30 meetings during the same two weeks. Now, Sean, you definitely did a lot better in math than I did. Because I actually, even though I went to Columbia, Sean, I don't know if you know this, I failed honors geometry as a freshman in high school for the year. Oh my so I didn't study. Yes, I did. Uh, I got A's in math the next three years because my parents almost killed me. Story for a different day, right? But can you tell me what number can you multiply times zero to get to 30? There is no number. Yes. So it is not just a linear differential and the influence amongst those fine gentlemen. Uh, it's not just an exponential differential, but in fact, it's an infinite differential, right? Because there's no number you can multiply by it. So is that a fair, uh, logical conclusion? I believe so, absolutely. Yeah. And we could play that game forever. You know, you know, top 1% of income, income earners, um, at the top 1%, we have the 1%, people make $400,000. At the 0.001%, people make 56 million. So our point for today is not about money, it's not about scheduling meetings. It's about the dynamic of influence. And that applies to how many patients we have, how many folks want to come and work with us and why, how our staff and our team are responsive and engaged, everything that we do. And that's what we're here to talk about and unpack. And this is the, I believe, 253rd, I've lost count today, episode of The Real Raw since COVID. And that in all involves the, the um, superpower of influence to even get to that stage. So, Sean, with that said, um, thank you so much again for doing everything that you do. Uh, actually, let me just share one more relevant piece um, for some of the, the physicians. So uh, I still own a law firm. I have 125 folks. And we do more work in medical revenue recovery um, than anybody in the state of New Jersey or in other states as well. Uh, but we've collected more than $400 million for medical providers, hospitals, surgical centers, surgeons, chiropractors. And in fact, um, I've done a tremendous amount of teaching in front of um, the New Jersey um, Medical Society, um, the State Chiropractic Society. Um, we were in fact counsel to the Chiro Society for a long time. My former partner for my firm that I sold still is. Um, we've done a lot of work with the Orthopedic Society, the Neurosurgical Society. So I just, I share that background and my empathy for the plight of physicians, uh, not only during this time of COVID, 
but in a time when a multi-billion dollar, mm -hmm. probably a trillion dollar enterprise called insurance companies is out there to make sure they pay as little as humanly possible. So I put that over there. Sean, back to you. Um, and who's going to go first today? And, and real quick, Sean and Sean, I just wanted to say hello. Quick drop in, Sean. It is Adam and I am here and Thank looking you. forward to uh, to this incredible group. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, and the ninth, this is the my uh, co-founder Adam Gagino. Quick uh, split second, he took he managed between fifty million and hundred million phone calls a year, fifty million and hundred million per year, and took a company from uh, zero to five hundred people, from three and a half million in revenue to seven hundred and fifty million in revenue, and was in Inc. Five Hundred Magazine three consecutive years as one of America's fastest growing companies. So that's Adam. He knows a little something about influence. That's the point. And Sean, you know something about influence because you've been doing it for a long time and you're incredibly well-respected. You're doing beautiful things in the world. have an amazing family. And dad, who's going first today, my friend? Uh, why don't we start with um, who, Jose, you have your, your, who all has a time crunch besides Jose? Let's let Jose, Jose, are you comfortable going first? And also Keith's got a little bit of a time crunch. Right around 4.30 or after. Okay, we'll be good. We'll be good. And we forgot to mention, Adam, by the way, is not only all of what you said, but he's like done. He's a 75 hard proponent and one of the best pickleball players in America. Don't forget that. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. he but, yeah. but Sean, he, he makes sure if he's playing pickleball that he only plays people over 85 years old, but don't tell <laughs> me. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm totally joking. Adam's a rock star. No, so, thank and, you. And yeah, functional was, medicine, man, my heart is here. Uh, absolutely. At the age of 30, I saw what, you know, what health can do, wellness can do all of that. You know the importance of understanding nutrition and the science behind uh, everything you guys do. So uh, I am, yeah, all, all about it. All about it. So thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Adam. And then you know, actually, Dwight has just joined, joined joined us. Dwight Tyndall, who's our final contestant, and <laughs> okay, like that's Dwight, that's all of our everybody on this phone call is so everybody on this Zoom call is tip, are, is so busy. For them to find time to be here is incredible. And just like that. Dwight is an exceptional surgeon, like uh, like some of the others on the, on the call, and a pioneer of minimally invasive spine surgery and yeah. all patients spine surgery. Um, Dwight, we've already kind of gone through some intros, and okay. I'd love for you to give us a little intro, and you know we'll we'll catch get you up to speed. Oh, intro about myself, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the world's greatest spine surgeon. <laughs> the <end. laughs> That's something we don't know, Dwight. <laughs> I'm, be, I'm sorry, I'm just messing around. As you can see, I'm still working. I just wrapped up my last patient. So, um, uh, should I make this dry or should I try to be funny? Which one? Have fun. Make it Have fun. fun. Okay, make it fun. Um, so, I'm a spine surgeon in Munster, Indiana, um, which is a suburb of Chicago. Um, I love what I do. It can be challenging at times, but I get great reward from it. I like helping people. I enjoy helping people. Um, Sean is the one that told me about this call. And I've been stressing all day because I realized that my day was going to be longer than that would allow me to get on this call at a, at 3.30. So anyway, I'm here. Um, what else about me? Um, originally from Jamaica, grew up in New York, lived in California, love the Midwest. Um, enjoy what I do. I wake up every day and I'm thankful. I'm extremely lucky, extremely, extremely lucky. I remind my kids that I grew up with two pairs of shoes and I, I lost count of how many I have now. So, um, <laughs> so you know, I can't complain. I, I, I shan't complain and I won't complain. So um, that's it. That's that's that kind funny. of the longest short of that. What's a fun fact about yourself, Dwight? Fun fact, um, I'm lazy. <laughs> 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 I'm lazy, but um, for some reason, I've got a certain drive that keeps me going. And I guess it's just the drive to do the best I can do. But if I could stay in bed all day and eat haagen ice cream <laughs> and get my bills paid, I'd do it. <laughs> Wait, most importantly, what flavor? Rum raisin. That's a Jamaican thing. <laughs> Sean, Sean, does Dr. Dwight not represent gravitational pull, like right off the bat? I mean, right off the bat. yes, absolutely. Unequivocally. And I want to see Dr. Dwight or no, if he's ever run a foot race against uh, his Jamaican native friend, uh, Usain Bolt. Uh, I, no, 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 no. I, 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 to quote, 
Clint Eastwood, Captain, a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> <laughs> and I know mine very well. Yeah. White is a lover of basketball, though. I mean, a funny, a little funny fun fact is I work a couple of hardly a mile away from Dwight. We never see each other in the community. But every year for several years in a row, I took I would take my son to, to the United Center to watch the Bulls. And I'd run into Dwight, I'd run into Dwight at, the, at United Center with his son. And it came to the point where I was going to the United Center with my son. I was looking for Dwight because I figured I'd run into him that day. Exactly. That's so true. That's, <laughs> in fact, it's funny. The last time we ran into each other, our son ran into each other first. Yes. <laughs> and then we saw each other. That was funny. Yeah. Well, well that's, I, I lost right. my son. I couldn't find my son. And then I found him in a little store. And my son and Dwight's son were shooting basketballs into some big, big can of balls in the right. middle of the store and they're doing three pointers from like the middle of the store into the little bucket. And that's how we met each other. Extraordinary. So Sean, I, I can't, um, 30 seconds on this, um, can't help. And this is the, the, the intersection is just too appropriate to let it go. Um, so I'm in a room two years ago and I'm in a room with somebody that teaches on stage across the country and the world about influence and how to tell a winning story. So he's the guy, I mean, the guy, right? And so I'm in this room and for, without delving into the details for time, I'm leaving the room and there's like 30 people who are gonna go play this game, uh, sort of similar to what we're doing today. And I'm walking out and we're in this uh, incredible incubator in Manhattan, you know, all these investors are there. And he tells me, he goes, hey, Sean, he goes, you know, hurry back cause I'm gonna go soon and I'm gonna teach you something. And essentially tell him he's going to crush me. So I just turned around to him. I walked back. I said, you know, um, Joe, I'll make up a name, Joe. I said, I'm sorry, you're like world class, right? He goes, well, well, yeah. I said, and, and nobody's better than you because you said you've never been beaten at this. Is that right? He said, yeah. I said, well, you know, there was a world champion that was the best in the world and then up strode Usain Bolt. I said, and brother, maybe, just maybe, you met Usain Bolt today. And then I went and kicked his ass. And that was the genesis of this show and many other things. Sean, I'm gonna kick it back to you, leave it your amazingly capable hands, uh, and Adam Gagino, and say thank you, brother, and for everybody for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Why don't we start with a little bit of the role play now? Let's start with um, Jose. Um, 